welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods, proudly supported by Just Car Insurance. It's a new episode, Martin, That's and right. it's about a new car. New cars are like new shoes. They are like new shoes. You, you get in them and you interact with the world, and they, they make life more comfortable and better unless you tread in something bad like I did last week when I trod in a bird and it exploded all over my feet. A, a and, bird exploded. An actual real bird that was dead in the gutter and I trod on it because I was SMSing you. You just sent me a photo of your new car and I was like, that man trod in a bird, it exploded out of every hole. No word of a lie, covered my shoe in maggot and turd. Were they your favourite shoes? Dude, they were the shoes that these guys would have seen me wearing for the last five years. My black my black sneakers, Fair. I threw them in the bin and went home bare feet. See, ev everyone has favourite shoes. They're the favourite shoes that you can wear like with a suit, the next day you can wear them scuba driving and you can like, you know, wear them to a, I don't know, you can wear them everywhere. Shorts. That's not actually true, you can't wear a shoe scuba diving. You can wear a shoe scuba suit. diving. But then there's those shoes that are like really like comfortable and expensive and a shiny, but they're not actually comfortable, they're, they're crap, crap. Yeah. aren't they Mark? That's exactly right. What are we talking about here Mark? We're I just want to see your new car mate. We're talking about new cars. This guy's been in my ear forever about getting a car that isn't. Marty's just been having all these dirty one night stands lately, of the automotive kind. It's like a crappy little thing here, a dirty little thing over there on the side, and I was just like, it's time to actually act your age, get something sensible, get something mad, and something with a little bit of class Mark. Isn't that right? He's right. So here's my new car. Not just any Euro, it's a small blue hatchback with a stupidly big motor, a factory 1.8 litre turbocharged engine, single spinner front diff and modern in every way with lots and lots of airbags. The 9N Series VW Polo uses the Mark IV Golf GTI engine with some extra bits. They are smooth, comfortable, reliable and, well, Euro. So I'll start with a couple of things that the Polo does well. I don't think it's a bad looking car. It's got nice paint, nice lines, it looks modern. Comes with 16 inch wheels, decent tyres. You can put Subaru style 5x100 wheels on there so there's lots of options to make it look madder. There's lots of aftermarket parts, there's lots of support. Obviously lots of people in Europe have these cars. So there's heaps you can do with it. It's almost like a modern, plush, blue turd. It's small and fast and everything works. Within a week, I'd tracked down a suspension knocking noise and headed out to Itchy Barn and swapped a few green frogs for some time on Benny's hoist. The factory front control arm bushes are extremely weak and this is a really common problem with polos. Replacement bushes are less than 100 bucks. VWs can require some retooling from your regular Japanese car tool arsenal. 12-point hex sockets are used everywhere and taking them apart can be a bit of a challenge. The rear control arm bush is a voided design. It's meant to keep road noise down and keep the suspension compliant. It's also notoriously weak, so solid poly bushes are a great replacement. The old bushes, or what's left of them, gets pried out of the mounting and the new bush is slid into place. It can take a bit of muscle to get the control arm back in. With the control arm bushes replaced and the car feeling a whole lot more stable, it's time to do something about the exhaust. Just like my Mark IV Golf GTI, the stock exhaust on the Polo sounds a little weak, so we're headed down to Kirawee Mufflers to fit up an X-Force turbo back exhaust system. We're fitting a full stainless system with a Varax adjustable rear muffler. The system that comes in the car is already pretty good. There's not many bends. The bends that are there are mandrel bent just to get over the rear suspension. We're going to replace the rear muffler and see what we can do about the rest of the system too. The turbo is on the back of the engine on these cars, so the most challenging part of the install is making the dump pipe. X-Force have off-the-shelf kits for many VWs, including the Golf, which is similar to the Polo in a lot of ways. So the old exhaust is off the car. We're left with this dump pipe. We're going to be using the flange off this rather than having to cut out a new one. Now there's a big restriction. We're going almost from four inches down into two in that exhaust stem, which is, which is holding us back in power. Then got a flex joint and a cat. We're going to be replacing that with a high flow cat. 
You then go into a two and a half inch muffler just to quiet it down, take some of the raspiness out of it. And then we go right over the back of the suspension and into the Verax adjustable muffler. The exhaust is going to be made as a complete custom setup and use an X-Force metal cat converter and centre muffler. We're putting a Varax muffler on the back of it so we can go as quiet as stock and not lose any of our mad Euro stealthiness. So that's where most of the restriction exists on this particular system. It drops right down almost to two inch and also you've got the sensor in there which gets in the way. We're going to replace that with a two and a half flex joint it's going to be mad. Many of the existing exhaust parts can be used as templates and brand new 2.5 inch stainless pipe used to join up the various parts. We're going stainless so the exhaust is as shiny as the glove box handle. We're going to upgrade the dump pipe from uh, 2 inch where the restriction is up to 2.5 inch and we're going to use a high, uh, high flow flexible joint with a double braid to get the flow as maximum. Uh, we're going to put a flange behind that and put a 100 cell high flow cat uh, instead of the factory uh, Euro spec cat which is fairly restrictive. Um, as far as the Varex rear muffler is concerned, we're, uh, this is the first one we've fit in one of these cars so we have to modify and see what we can get, get in there but I'm pretty, uh, pretty hopeful that it's going to go in there pretty easily. The pipes are MIG welded in place to ensure accurate fitment and then taken off the car again and TIG welded on the bench so they seal perfectly. So here we have the dump pipe, it's all been custom made. It's been made up on the car so we know it'll definitely fit. It's been tacked up with a MIG welder. Now we get it on the bench, we grind it all back, we TIG it nice and neatly and that replaces the old factory one with that. And it even looks mad. First up, the dump pipe. We're also adding bungs for the oxygen sensors and wideband. So the midsection is in now, it's just a matter of welding it up to the exhaust and then hanging it also doesn't knock on anything and also so the muffler sits nice and flat on the back of the car. The Varax is wired up into an ignition switch 12 volt source and the remote can be used to adjust the position of the silencer system within the rear muffler. The Varax control box is plugged in and the wire run through to the front of the car. So to get it to work we just have to plug this into the cigarette lighter. We are going to hardwire it later on but so that we can adjust it and test it out. This goes into the cigarette lighter and that's the install done. If you've got an outlet in the boot it's even easier. If you want more information on tuning your Volkswagen, check out our episode in Season 1, Episode 22. With the exhaust on and sounding awesome, the turbo spools up a lot quicker. It'll still need a tune to get the full benefits of the free-flowing exhaust, but overall the car is pretty well sorted which leads me to some of the problems I have with this car. Now Moog's been going on for ages about how awesome Euro cars are. Get a Euro, get a Volkswagen. But I have one really big problem with it. It doesn't make me feel anything. It's got great supportive seats. It's got a nice interior, everything works. From the factory, the stereo is there. It's got features. It's got outside temperature, cruise control, power, everything. It's comfortable. The aircon is brilliant. But nothing makes me want to get in it and drive it around. If, there's, if it's sitting next to the Blue Turd, then I'll take the Blue Turd. If it's sitting next to any other car, motorbike, then I'm going to look at it and go, eh, Polo's nice, but why? I think at the end of the day, this is an expensive Euro Blue Turd. But it doesn't have the character of the Blue Turd. It wasn't as cheap as the Blue Turd. You can't go, well, I've got my little shopping trolley, it only costs 1500 bucks to buy. I mean, these things are at least 10 grand to buy secondhand. Stock for stock, this is, this is just like playing a video game about driving through the suburbs in a boring car. 
European cars, mighty Golf GTIs. I've had a number of them. I love them. They're awesome. That's why I told you to buy one. You didn't get a Golf GTI. You got a Polo GTI. Which is just I don't know what version. it's not a smaller version of that. Shut up. Just stop talking for a second. I told you to get an R32 so you can make that farty blip noise that people. That's the only reason. Ah, 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 ah. Yeah. I told you to get one of them. You didn't get one of them. I told you to get a GTI. You didn't get one of them. You're cracking on about four wheel drive, forward wheel drive, front wheel drive. You're crapping on about so much stuff, you're confusing me even. And then, you bought the Polo, which I was like, cool, finally Marty's done yeah. something awesome. It's great. And now we've done this episode, and now you hate it. Yeah, it's a great car. It's just so boring to drive, I wanted to kill myself and like go and get another car. So that may be what I actually did. What do you mean? I may have just got a different car. A so, better one. A better, you got a better Volkswagen. No, I didn't. Did you get a Golf R? No, I didn't get it. Did you finally get a Golf R? Why would I do that? This because is Golf R, dude, business. they're like Evos. They're you like pretend 60. you can drive really fast, you get in there, the press, you, you press a button and you're driving faster than everyone else. Same problem, man. And Evos are mad, I'm going to get one one day, but not yet. They don't have Evo wagons, do they? They do in Japan, Martin, and we're going to pledge to the government, we're going to say, hey Julia, sort us out. We were at her place for that dinner thing. Yeah, Evo wagons. And then you no, I did, did not. that inappropriate did not. thing. Always with the inappropriate thing. So anyway, so no, no, no Euro, Polo, nah. Gonna just, gonna just sit there. I'm not gonna, not gonna use it. I got a new car. Next time on Mighty Car Mods, Marty's new car finally revealed, and the most requested episode in Mighty Car Mods history. 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 It's gonna make it so awesome that it's gonna be ridiculous. I've had European cars for a long time. I love them. They're great. Yeah. Except my BMW. That was a pain. Let me tell you a quick story about that for starters. And this is a little tip for people going and buying secondhand cars. I met some people in the city. Want to have a little drive around the bit? Yep, cool. That's cool. We want to go for a test drive. Cool. Let's go down a little bit of Parramatta Road. Oh, now we want to see how it goes on the highway. Oh, okay. We're soon on the M4 heading towards Penrith. And I'm like, dudes, I have stuff to do. I want to go home. And then they finally turned around via Maccas in Parramatta, went back to the city, at which point this was the best bit. The girl said to me, her English was a bit rough. She goes, this is so true. She said to me, inside of the car is black. I want it pink because I'm the fashion girl Right. And she wanted $4,000 off the price. And I said, because you want the inside pink has actually nothing to do with me. What's the fashion girl? We don't know what that meant. Oh. It meant that the inside of the car was unfashionable, I think. Uh, okay. I'm the fashion girl. Anyway, enough of that.